Hi everyone and welcome to Sambo's special training series. Uh, this section is a continuation of our watershed delineation using ArcGIS Pro. Okay, so for this section, we'll look at how to delineate watershed. Okay. In the previous video, I mentioned that we need a digital elevation model data for these analysis. Okay. So if you have your software opened, the first thing for us to do is to load our DEM data. Okay. Uh, to do this, uh, just go, I have my data or my folder attached to the software. So I just go straight to my catalog pan and go to folders I have it in here DM data All right, so you can just hold and drag and drop okay so I have my DM data I'll upload it here as you can see the next step is for us to conduct what we call fill. All right. Our fill help us to correct the depressions on the on the image, All right? For us to get a better uh, visualization and also improve the accuracy of our calculations of our flow direction and flow accumulation. Okay. So let's go ahead to perform our fill. All right, so to do this, you go to your analysis and click on tools. And here you can go straight. You have the search engine here, whereby you can type directly. So here you can type fill, F-I-L-L. Right, so here we are using the special analysis tool. So you click on it. Audio jungle. Yeah, it's under the hydrology. Okay. So you have the input, you ask for your input surface raster. And here it's our DEM data to input it. And then to ask for your output surface raster. That's your output file location. So you can change this if you so wish if not you just hit on run Audio jungle. Audio jungle. okay so oh. all right uh, all right so now we have our fill you can see the difference if I uncheck the fill our, our initial DM data looks quite blare and dark and with the fill you could see you can see more in the bright very bright and then more clear than the initial DM data all right so having done with the fill let's uncheck the initial DM data but then work with our fill so the next thing to do is for us to delineate the area we are interested in so the area you are interested in so to do that you need to load a shape file containing the area okay and for the purpose of this training my interest is in Gasout municipality. So I'll go ahead to, it's one of the municipalities in Ghana. So I go ahead to load the shape out of the streets in Ghana. So still I go to my catalog pan here. Okay. Then go to my folder and I have it under my map data. So, okay, click and drag and drop. Okay, so here you have all your 
district all the districts in Ghana all right it's plain okay let me make these hollow for better visualization okay it's hollow okay so we can see the districts right that fall within the DM data we have so one quick thing is you have to download the DM data in the area you are interested in or right, to cover the area you're interested in all right so now let's go ahead to couch out our area of interest okay here the gas out municipality all right so to do this you go to map and then we have to select by attribute say so we'll select gas out by attribute okay so you have it in your tabs here so you click on select by attribute all right and then by default you have your Ghana district shape file all right or whatever shape file that contains the area you are interested in will be loaded in the input row then here you come to you have to build our query right so we are interested in the district so if I drop down here you can see the attributes of the data as the Ghana district data we have the object the region the district right? we are interested in the district so we select district and then here gives you a drop down of all the districts right in Ghana or that the data has captured okay, so we go ahead to select the south and south so when you're done you click okay so as you can see we have our Gansau municipality right, showing here okay all right so how do we extract only the Gansau municipality out of the DM data okay first of all we need to export this to get the, the data of the gas out right and then the simple way to do this is to right click on the Ghana district shape or here then you come down see data then to the arrow you see export features click on it all right and then here you have your Ghana district let me change the name to gas south Click on OK. Okay. So now I have my Gan South shape file uh, selected in here. Okay. So I asked an earlier question: How do we delineate our area of interest? That's the Gan South municipality. To do this, you reuse extract by mask all right and this can be found in our due processing tool so i prefer to go a short way so for all two you you want to use in the two boxes you can search for it directly so I'll just type extract by mask all right so we are using the special analysis tool extract by mask you click on it here to ask for the input raster okay so you drop down the input raster here is our fill okay so it's a fill that we are using so you click on the fill and to ask for your input raster or the feature max data all right and here will be our gun south okay because that's the area we are interested in so we select that then leave you can leave well you can change the output name and then the file location but if you're okay with it you can let me change this to you can south can 
south mask okay. and hit run okay so here we go we have our south mask here so let me uncheck the others so that we can do that. Okay, so we have if I check all the other ones, we can see our gun south mask here. Let me just go ahead to work with the remove the data that we, we don't need anymore. take off the fill okay, let me remove it so that to tidy up our contents pan okay so now that we have our Gansau municipality right, which is our area of interest all right these just a color gradient right zero dark areas showing low line areas and the lighter areas showing high elevations okay so that's it if you like you can change the color the gradient here you can change it to whatever you want okay, okay. Audio jungle. all right so the next thing for us to to do is to now go and calculate our flow direction okay so perform an analysis on flow direction so we still go to our geoprocessing tool and then search for flow direction okay. so click here then to ask for your input raster surface raster So this is going to our input surface raster will be our the gas out mask that we've extracted. So select that, okay, and then we leave the we can leave. Let's just make it through direction gas out. Alright, and then we have the, the flow direction tag D8. So we leave it at default D8. Okay. Then we click on run. Okay. So we have these eight colors right displaying. Alright. Uh, let me quickly explain the The flow directions in here and the, the colors all right the interpretation of it okay so let me just take you here and uh, bring you here okay so here you can see the colors so we have the direction codings all right so these are the colors and these tells us the the flow right how a flow is moving from each cell right to the other right so the basically we conduct the flow direction right to calculate the direction of the flow right, from each cell okay so as you can see in my case out we're looking at the the flow all right from each cell in the dm data and this is used for us to be able to identify the path that the water right is likely to take downhill okay so if let's go back quickly to our project so here the colors are what it means here is that you have uh, this color all right it means that this is not moving all right doesn't have uh, others moving in right and then we have areas 
you see we have the 180 128 all right the 128 implies that you have these areas are quite on like uphill all right or their elevation is high and you have a lot of water moving from these areas all right to a point like the green right as we can see so you have a lot of water in here okay so there is more flow from uh this color all right and then followed so here it means that you have about one to eight channels right from these colors right you have uh the 64 32 18 all right so it's in the multiples okay so this tells us the flow direction okay and once again the flow direction will help us to calculate right how the direction of flow from each cell i mean each pixel cell right of the DEM, that is a digital elevation model. And the last thing is, it help us to identify the path the water will take downhill. So this direction will help, help us to know the path, the likelihood of these uh, water taken to the downhill or to the low lying areas. Okay. So as with our flow direction done, the next thing for us to do is to then look at our flow accumulation. Okay. So same process, you're processing to search for flow direction. Sorry, flow accumulation. Okay, so we use click on this. So here we input the flow direction raster. So it's asking for the flow direction raster. So it means that you have to input the flow direction here. And then you leave everything okay, by default. Unless you want to change the output name. Click on run. okay so why do we conduct a flow accumulation all right in watershed elevation so the flow accumulation also help us to calculate the number of cells that flow into each cell in the DNA right but this time around it help us to identify the areas of the watershed that contribute to the pore point okay so in the first video i explained what the power point is okay you can refer to that so the, the flow accumulation help us to calculate the number of cells that are flowing all right or that contribute to the general uh, watershed of a particular power point so power point is an area that you are interested the area that you use as the benchmark to delineate the watershed okay so we have our results for the flow accumulation okay but as you can see we can't see much of the drainage patterns right of the cells so the best thing for us to do is to reclassify all right so we can reclassify the cells to create the stream network so this will help us to uh see the stream networks right based on the flow directions and then the flow accumulation data we already have now so let's go to our your processing tools and then search for reclassify reclassify okay so we are not using the 3d we are using the special analyst tool so everything has to do with a special analyst tool so click and reclassify here to ask for the input raster okay and the input raster will be our flow accumulation okay then you click here you see here classify 
click on classify so here instead of the five classes here let's reduce these to two all right so that when we reduce it we can reduce the, the values so that we can see more of the classes okay so here we have from zero to let's let's change this to 1000 okay and make here zero don't forget to change it to zero then second class let's change to make it 1001 all right to the last figure and don't forget to change these to one so we change it to one and then we click on run good all right so as you can see you know now our drainage patterns are much clearer are much clearer so we can see all the the patterns of the of the water within the jurisdiction that's the Gasau municipality all right so now with this we can go ahead to conduct our watershed analysis okay so what it then means is that not we have to create a pole point okay and then the pole point is is the area right whereby we we use to create the watershed of the entire place okay so to create the pole point right first we need to add a feature first of all we need to add a feature class okay so we go into our catalog pan right and go to our geo database okay. so this is the geo database we are using so you right click on the geo database and then go to new so we have our new feature class so you create a new feature class okay so here we will name it uh, let me give it powerpoint we can you can either name it powerpoint or outlet okay so let me make it pop for one then change it's going to be a point so you change it to point all right then you can from here you can click you can click next the next bar then finish okay so we have our PowerPoint showing in our content pan. The next thing for us is to edit this PowerPoint and then create it on our raster image or the area we are interested in. Okay. So to do that, you click on it, come to the edit tab here, yeah. click on it and then click on create so create features so our create features and direct you see our poor one so just click on it and then we start to create a point okay so okay I'm interested I want to create my PowerPoint uh, somewhere here and see the watershed so you of the area so let me zoom in so that it falls on the exact
string. Okay. All right, so let me keep it here. Okay, so when you are done, check this and then you see. Okay, good. So with our power point as our reference point, all right, or as our area of interest, okay. even though the, the home, the study is being conducted in the Gasol municipality, all right, you can select power point in different areas. Can select four points, you know, on the streets. Sorry, on the uh, the river outlets, on the you know the terrain, and where you think uh, you are interested in, or you want to know the the area of uh, of the watershed of that particular point. All right, you can just place it there. When I'm done, when we are done with this watershed, we'll look at uh, a few, create a few power points in different areas so that we see the outcome. Okay, so now let's go straight to delineate our watershed. So we go to our geoprocessing tool. Then this search for watershed. Select here, then here to ask for your your flow direction raster. Okay, so you have to be mindful and select the flow direction. Yeah. And then here to ask for your pole point. So we have the pole one here. Okay. So here the output will be flow watershed flow one. Okay. So let's select this and see the outcome. Okay, so here, what this is the watershed of this pole point we've selected. Okay, so all this area falls the catchment area of the watershed. Okay. So what it means is that this area, okay, so this spot point, this outlet here, okay, receives water from all these areas, all these dark areas. Okay. This power point receives water from all these areas. That's the implication. And so what it then means is that if you are here, all right. Or a stream here, or let's say a, a residential area near this area where we have our four points, it's likely, right? Or we we'll receive the you know, water from all these areas. Okay, and in the first video, I explained by saying that watershed analysis helps us to, for example, manage our flats. Okay, and so. In managing flats, this should tell you that areas around this place will be susceptible to flood, right? Because of the volume of water. Okay, if it's uh, a water resource management that is interested in this, they get to understand the catchment area of of these streams, right? And so, if you want to, for example, mitigate a pollution right of, of a stream you know you have to focus on this entire area because it could come from in all these areas or what um, streams or rivers right are joining from this area to this particular stream for example so to throw more light these are some of the applications that you can use right in in Habitat conservation, right? You get to understand the threshold of the watershed, right? How human impact, right? And so, if you want to understand, right, how man is affecting maybe a particular watershed and affecting 
the habitats that the plant and animal species within that watershed, then the focus should be this entire region or this entire area because the impact could come from in at all. Let me uncheck this for us to see. So you can see all these areas, right? So maybe a pollution from here can will end up here, a pollution from here will end up, a pollution from there will end up here. Right? And so watershed gives you the broader picture for you to envisage and for you to increase your scope when it comes to your planning process, when it comes to uh, you addressing issues and problems. Right. So let's look at another PowerPoint and see the watershed right, it will cover. Okay, so let me create another PowerPoint. So the process is still the same, right? So on our your database here new feature class so here I'll make it Paul 2 so that we can differentiate and change this to point and click on finish okay and let me uncheck this okay so you have to create the new or two. So you come to create under the edit tab. So you have your port two. You double click. All right, and then click on point. So let me use. Let me let me let me place it here. Here. Okay. So. We are done. Check. And then you save. Okay. All right. So now let's go ahead to delineate our watershed. So our geoprocessing. Okay. Let me just go back one more time. Right. So you search for it. Watershed. Okay. Then the flow direction. So where are you here? Okay. Then the input raster. So the pole point. So here is pole two. Then click on OK. Good. So with these two, you can see there is a pore, there is a watershed of the area. Okay. Audio jungle. Let's let's measure the the area of this watershed, right? But to do that. We first have to convert this to polygon, convert this raster to polygon. Okay. So to do that, you still the processing tools. So just search for raster to polygon. Start to polygon. Okay, to ask for your input raster. So the input raster is our watershed flow two. Okay, that's the area we are interested in. Okay. Then you just run it. So let me make this hollow so that we can see the watershed. Okay. All right. So this is the watershed. So this is in the form of a polygon now. All right. So now we can measure 
the area of this watershed. Okay. So you come to under your map stuff you have measure. Okay. So you drop down measure and then click on measure feature. Okay. So we can change this to let's use metrics. Okay. So click here. Okay. So you just need to click on it once. That's the the watershed area. Right. And as we can see, the area in square kilometer is 40.07 in square kilometer. Right. When it comes to parameters, it's 109,884 or 92 feet when it comes to parameters. Okay. So this is the the area this watershed covers right using this power point okay let's do same for the earlier pole we created so let me uncheck the let me uncheck this so we still have this showing and focus on this Let's focus on this. Right, so it then means that we need to also create. You have to convert this to a polygon. So go back to convert raster to polygon. So we have the parameter already open. So we just have to change this to this was watershed flow one. So we change it to one. And then here we have. Okay, let's just go back and then just select it all over again so we have our watershed flow one okay then we run this okay so let me make this hollow again All right, so now we have it in the form of a polygon. So let's measure this and see the area it covers. So the same steps come to measure, then click on measure features. All right, it's a matrix. So if you are done, you can, let's erase this so that we get a new for this PowerPoint or this watershed. So I click on it and you could see this is about times three of it. So this is 110.64 square kilometers. So this is the the area right, it covers. It's a very huge area. Right? So it help you to understand right, the, the area, the watershed you've delineated covers. Right? So I'm sure we've learned something great out of this section. Um, RGS Pro is a great tool, right? That we can you we can employ or do, to perform analysis and to better influence decisions and then plan well. So thank you for your time, and see you in the next video. Thank you. Bye.